Would you like to see our exhibition? This is the 1950s. Uh, we, we printed this map um, of where durians used to grow in Singapore. Oh, cool. So we, and behind it is that, um, that effect. So there are many places where durians used to grow, but most of them have been cleared out. There are people who still uh, go to these places to like find wild durians and things. But I think right. most of the places have been transformed to urban, urbanized areas, especially in this area. Many of the durians... This is the CBD. No? Yeah, CBD is... Most of the durian trees were cleared out then already. And in this area, near Salita and uh, Mandai, they are still doing trees, but also moving on. This took a lot of research. Yes, it did. <laughs> so now we are the 60s to 70s. So, um, as you probably know, uh, Singapore is only doing independence in 1965. Oh. So in that, in that period of time, um, the government wasn't as Established and the authorities weren't that competent. A lot of things were unregulated, especially the, the hawkers in Singapore and durian sellers as well. As people started selling more durians, obviously the sellers got a bit selfish and got a bit greedy, so they started cheating people. <laughs> right. I, I'm sure it's like quite common even today, right? It's I right. think the practice that, that has always been going on in Singapore. So I think last time they, they used to cheat people on uh, yeah, corn. Yeah, using the dashing scale. So they will adjust the scale such that you pay more for... I think even from the 60s and 70s, durian sellers were, had that reputation of being very shady and very very violent and intimidating. So what they did was they would heckle and threaten customers who were questioning their practices. Uh-huh. Like when these customers said like, hey, uh, why are we like charge so much for such shitty durian? And then uh, sellers at that time will, will retaliate with violence. It became like, quite a huge problem now. Uh. In the 80s, I started cross-breeding durian uh -huh. to make like um, Mao Wang or XO, Green Bamboo and these things for. I think these are like, the, the popular ones in Singapore, especially Mao Shan Wang. And I suppose like when Singapore started to have um, MRT, like train, public transport, that's when the durian got banned <laughs> in MRT. <laughs> uh, 1990s? Yes, uh, new technologies and new innovation. That's an interesting and thing, so, uh, the, the new durian cuisine. Yes, exactly. So, I think that in the 90s to like the present, people have been experimenting on a durian, infusing durian flavors with foreign flavors, foreign products. Uh -huh. So today we have durian puffs and tea, durian moon cakes, uh, durian ice cream. And I think a couple of US students, uh, National University of Singapore, they came up with this um, durian wine. Have you heard about it? I heard the news. about it. I think, I think it might taste a bit gross. Yeah, I think it would be good. Sure. I haven't tried it myself. Because in Singapore, there's a very strong myth that um, we don't eat durians with alcohol. <laughs> so it's probably not true. Though. This is the last section of our exhibition. What's your durian story? Those are all people's memories of durian. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So some of, some of them are quite funny. Like this guy. I used to eat a lot of durian to induce a fever so I can miss school. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's why we've been getting quite a, like quite good responses, and yeah. some of them are really really quite funny. Yeah, you can check out our website. Uh, we posted a few a few of their like the funniest stories that we we've, we've seen so far. Yeah, so that's all for our exhibition, and we've been giving out free durians as well. I think what you guys are doing is just so fun. I really wish that I could be there and see it for myself. Good luck on your book.